Question 1. The most important nursing intervention to correct skin dryness is, a. Avoid bathing the patient until the condition is remedied, and notify the physician. b. Ask the physician to refer the patient to a dermatologist, and suggest that the patient wear home laundered sleepwear. c. Consult the dietitian about increasing the patient's fat intake, and take necessary measures to prevent infection. d. Encourage the patient to increase his fluid intake. Use non-irritating soap when bathing the patient, and apply lotion to the involved areas. Question 1 Answer D. Encourage the patient to increase his fluid intake, use non-irritating soap when bathing the patient, and apply lotion to the involved areas. Question 1 Explanation Dry skin will eventually crack, ranking the patient more prone to infection. To prevent this, the nurse should provide adequate hydration through fluid intake. Use non-rotating soaps or no soap when bathing the patient, and lubricate the patient's skin with lotion. Bathing may be limited but need not be avoided entirely. The attending physician and dietitian may be consulted for treatment, but home laundered items usually are not necessary. Question 2. When bathing a patient's extremities, the nurse should use long, firm strokes from the distal to the proximal areas. This technique. A. Provides an opportunity for skin assessment. B. Avoids undue strain on the nurse. C. Increases venous blood return. D. Causes vasoconstriction and increases circulation. Question to answer. C. Increases venous blood return. Question to explanation. Washing from distal to proximal areas stimulates venous blood flow, thereby preventing venous stasis. It improves circulation but does not result in vasoconstriction. The nurse can assess the patient's condition throughout the bath, regardless of washing technique, and should feel no strain while bathing the patient. Question 3. Vivid dreaming occurs in which stage of sleep? A. Stage I non-REM. B. Rapid eye movement, REM, stage. C. Stage 2 non-REM. D. Delta stage. Question 3. Answer. B. Rapid eye movement, REM, stage question 3 explanation, other characteristics of rapid eye movement, REM, sleep are deep sleep, the patient cannot be awakened easily, depressed muscle tone, and possibly irregular heart and respiratory rates. Non-REM sleep is a deep, restful sleep without dreaming. Delta stage, or slow wave sleep, occurs during non-REM stages 3 and 4 and is often equated with quiet sleep. Question 4. The natural sedative in meat and milk products, especially warm milk, that can help induce sleep is, A. Fluorospam. B. Temospam. C. Tryptophan. D. Methotrimprazine. Question 4. Answer. C. Tryptophan. Question 4. Explanation. Tryptophan is a natural sedative. Fluorospam, Dalmain, Temospam, Restoral, and Methotrimprazine, Levoprim are hypnotic sedatives. Question 5. Nursing interventions that can help the patient to relax and sleep restfully include all of the following except, a. Have the patient take a 30 to 60 minute nap in the afternoon. b. Turn on the television in the patient's room. c. Provide quiet music and interesting reading material. d. Massage the patient's back with long strokes. Question 5 Answer. I have the patient take a 30 to 60 minute nap in the afternoon question 5 explanation napping in the afternoon is not conductive to nighttime sleeping quiet music watching television reading and massage usually will relax the patient helping him to fall asleep question 6 restraints can be used for all of the following purposes except to a prevent a confused patient from removing tubes such as feeding tubes IV lines, and urinary catheters. B. Prevent a patient from falling out of bed or a chair. C. Discourage a patient from attempting to ambulate alone when he requires assistance for his safety. D. Prevent a patient from becoming confused or disoriented. Question 6 Answer. D. Prevent a patient from becoming confused or disoriented. Question 6 Explanation. By restricting a patient's movements. Restraints may increase stress and lead to confusion, rather than prevent it. 
The other choices are valid reasons for using restraints. Question 7. Which of the following is the nurse's legal responsibility when applying restraints? A. Document the patient's behavior. B. Document the type of restraint used. C. Obtain a written order from the physician except in an emergency, when the patient must be protected from injury to himself or others. D. All of the above. Question 7 Answer. D. All of the above. Question 7 Explanation. When applying restraints, the nurse must document the type of behavior that prompted her to use them, document the type of restraints used, and obtain a physician's written order for the restraints. Question 8. Cubilaras's five successive stages of death and dying are, a. Anger, bargaining, denial, depression, acceptance. b. Denial, anger, depression, bargaining, acceptance. c. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. d. Bargaining, denial, anger, depression, acceptance. Question 8 Answer, c. Denial, anger, bargaining, Depression Acceptance Question 8 Explanation Cubular Ross's five successive stages of death and dying are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. The patient may move back and forth through the different stages as he and his family members react to the process of dying, but he usually goes through all of these stages to reach acceptance. Question 9 A terminally ill patient usually experiences all of the following feelings during the anger stage except a. Rage. B. Envy. C. Numbness. D. Resentment. Question 9 Answer. C. Numbness. Question 9 Explanation. Numbness is typical of the depression stage, when the patient feels a great sense of loss. The anger stage includes such feelings as rage, envy, resentment, and the patient's questioning why me? Question 10. Nurses and other healthcare providers often have difficulty helping a terminally ill patient through the necessary stages leading to acceptance of death. Which of the following strategies is most helpful to the nurse in achieving this goal? A. Taking psychology courses related to gerontology. B. Reading books and other literature on the subject of thanatology. C. Reflecting on the significance of death. D. Reviewing varying cultural beliefs and practices related to death. Question 10 Answer. C. Reflecting on the significance of death. Question 10 Explanation. According to thanatologists, reflecting on the significance of death helps to reduce the fear of death and enables the healthcare provider to better understand the terminally ill patient's feelings. It also helps to overcome the belief that medical and nursing measures have failed, when a patient cannot be cured. Question 11. Which of the following symptoms is the best indicator of imminent death? A. A weak, slow pulse. B. Increased muscle tone. C. Fixed, dilated pupils. D. Slow, shallow respirations. Question 11. Answer. C. Fixed, dilated pupils. Question 11. Explanation. Fixed, dilated pupils are sign of imminent death. Pulse becomes weak but rapid. Muscles become weak and atonic and periods of apnea occur during respiration. Question 12. A nurse caring for a patient with an infectious disease who requires isolation should refers to guidelines published by the A. National League for Nursing, NLN. B. Centers for Disease Control, CDC. C. American Medical Association, AMA. D. American Nurses Association, ANA. Question 12 Answer. B. Centers for Disease Control, CDC, Question 12 Explanation, The Center of Disease Control, CDC, publishes and frequently updates guidelines on caring for patients who require isolation. The National League of Nursing's, NLN's, major function is accrediting nursing education programs in the United States. The American Medical Association, AMA, is a national organization of physicians. The American Nurses Association, ANA, is a national organization of registered nurses. Question 13. To institute appropriate isolation precautions, the nurse must first know the A. Organism's mode of transmission. B. Organism's gram-staining characteristics. C. Organism's susceptibility to antibiotics. D. Patient's susceptibility to the organism. Question 13. Answer. 
a organism's mode of transmission question 13 explanation before instituting isolation precaution the nurse must first determine the organism's mode of transmission for example an organism transmitted through nasal secretions requires that the patient be kept in respiratory isolation which involves keeping the patient in a private room with a door closed and wearing a mask a groan and gloves when coming in direct contact with the patient the organism's gram straining characteristics reveal whether the organism is gram negative or gram positive an important criterion in the physician's choice for drug therapy and the nurse's development of an effective plan of care the nurse also needs to know whether the organism is susceptible to antibiotics but this could take several days to determine if she waits for the results before instituting isolation precautions the organism could be transmitted in the meantime the patient's susceptibility to the organism has already been established the nurse would not be instituting isolation precautions for a non-infected patient question 14 which is the correct procedure for collecting a sputum specimen for culture and sensitivity testing a have the patient place the specimen in a container and enclose the container in a plastic bag. B. Have the patient expectorate the sputum while the nurse holds the container. C. Have the patient expectorate the sputum into a sterile container. D. Offer the patient an antiseptic mouthwash just before he expectorate the sputum. Question 14 Answer. C. Have the patient expectorate the sputum into a sterile container. Question 14 Explanation. Placing the specimen in a sterile container ensures that it will not become contaminated. The other answers are incorrect because they do not mention sterility and because antiseptic mouthwash could destroy the organism to be cultured. Before sputum collection, the patient may use only tap water for nursing the mouth. Question 15. An autoclave is used to sterilize hospital supplies because, a. More articles can be sterilized at a time. B. Steam causes less damage to the materials. C. A lower temperature can be obtained. D. Pressurized steam penetrates the supplies better. Question 15 Answer. D. Pressurized steam penetrates the supplies better. Question 15 Explanation. An autoclave, an apparatus that sterilizes equipment by means of high temperature pressurized steam, is used because it can destroy all forms of microorganisms, including spores. Question 16. The best way to decrease the risk of transferring pathogens to a patient when removing contaminated gloves is to a. Wash the gloves before removing them. b. Gently pull on the fingers of the gloves when removing them. c. Gently pull just below the cuff and invert the gloves when removing them. d. Remove the gloves and then turn them inside out. Question 16 Answer. C. Gently pull just below the cuff and invert the gloves when removing them. Question 16 Explanation Turning the gloves inside out while removing them keeps all contaminants inside the gloves. They should then be placed in a plastic bag with soiled dressings and discarded in a soiled utility room garbage pail, double bagged. The other choices can spread pathogens within the environment. Question 17 after having an IV line in place for 72 hours, a patient complains of tenderness, burning, and swelling. Assessment of the IV site reveals that it is warm and erythematous. This usually indicates A. Infection B. Infiltration C. Phlebitis D. Bleeding Question 17 Answer C. Phlebitis Question 17 Explanation Tenderness, Warmth, Swelling, and in some instances, a burning sensation are signs and symptoms of phlebitis. Infection is less likely because no drainage or fever is present. Infiltration would result in swelling and pallor, not erythema, near the insertion site. The patient has no evidence of bleeding. Question 18. To ensure homogenization when diluting powdered medication in a vial, the nurse should a. Shake the vial vigorously. B. Roll the vial gently between the palms. C. Invert the vial and let it stand for one minute. D. Do nothing after adding the solution to the vial. Question 18 Answer. B. Roll the vial gently between the palms. Question 18 Explanation. Gently rolling a sealed vial between the palms produces sufficient heat to enhance dissolution of a powdered medication. 
Shaking the vial vigorously can break down the medication and alter its pharmacologic action. Inverting the vial or leaving it alone does not ensure thorough homogenization of the powder and the solvent. Question 19. The nurse is teaching a patient to prepare a syringe with 40 units of U100 and pH insulin for self-injection. The patient's first priority concerning self-injection in this situation is to A. Assess the injection site B. Select the appropriate injection site C. Check the syringe to verify that the nurse has removed the prescribed insulin dose D. Clean the injection site in a circular manner with alcohol sponge Question 19 Answer C. Check the syringe to verify that the nurse has removed the prescribed insulin dose Question 19 Explanation When the nurse teaches the patient to prepare an insulin injection, the patient's first priority is to validate the dose accuracy. The next steps are to select the site, assess the site, and clean the site with alcohol before injecting the insulin. Question 20 The physician's order reads administer 1 gram of in sodium, ANSEV in 150 milliliters of normal saline solution in 60 minutes. What is the flow rate if the drop factor is 10 GTT equals 1 milliliter? A. 25 GTT, minute. B. 37 GTT, minute. C. 50 GTT, minute. D. 60 GTT, minute. Question 20 Answer. A 25 GTT, minute question 20 explanation, 25 GTT, minute, question 21, a patient must receive 50 units of humulin regular insulin. The label reads 100 units equals 1 milliliter. How many milliliters should the nurse administer? A. 0.5 milliliters. B. 0.75 milliliters. C. 1 milliliter. D. 2 milliliters. Question 21 Answer. A 0.5 milliliters. Question 21 Explanation. 0.5 milliliters. Question 22. How should the nurse prepare an injection for a patient who takes both regular and NPH insulin? A. Draw up the NPH insulin, then the regular insulin, in the same syringe. B. Draw up the regular insulin, then the NPH insulin, in the same syringe. C. Use two separate syringe. D. Check with the physician. Question 22 Answer. B. Draw up the regular insulin, then the NPH insulin, in the same syringe. Question 22 Explanation. Drugs that are compatible may be mixed together in one syringe. In the case of insulin, the shorter acting, clear insulin, regular, should be drawn up before the longer acting, cloudy insulin, NPH, to ensure accurate measurements. Question 23, a patient has just received 30 mg of codeine by mouth for pain. Five minutes later he vomits. What should the nurse do first? A. Call the physician. B. Remedicate the patient. C. Observe the emesis. D. Explain to the patient that she can do nothing to help him. Question 23 Answer. C. Observe the emesis. Question 23 Explanation. After a patient has vomited. The nurse must inspect the emesis to document color, consistency, and amount. In this situation, the patient recently ingested medication, so the nurse needs to check for remnants of the medication to help determine whether the patient retained enough of it to be effective. The nurse must then notify the physician, who will decide whether to repeat the dose or prescribe an anti-emetic. Question 24. A patient is characterized with a number 16 in dwelling urinary, Foley, catheter to determine if, a. Drama has occurred. b. His 24-hour output is adequate. c. He has a urinary tract infection. d. Residual urine remains in the bladder after voiding. Question 24 Answer. b. His 24-hour output is adequate. Question 24 Explanation. A 24-hour urine output of less than 500 milliliters in an adult is considered inadequate and may indicate kidney failure. This must be corrected while the patient is in the acute state so that appropriate fluids, electrolytes, and medications can be administered and excreted. Indwelling catheterization is not needed to diagnose trauma, urinary tract infection, or residual urine.
Question 25. A staff nurse who is promoted to assistant nurse manager may feel uncomfortable initially when supervising her former peers. She can best decrease this discomfort by A. Writing down all assignments B. Making changes after evaluating the situation and having discussions with the staff C. Telling the staff nurses that she is making changes to benefit their performance D. Evaluating the clinical performance of each staff nurse in a private conference. Question 25 Answer. B. Making changes after evaluating the situation and having discussions with the staff. Question 25 Explanation. A new assistant nurse manager should not make changes until she has had a chance to evaluate staff members, patients, and physicians. Changes must be planned thoroughly and should be based on a need to improve conditions not just for the sake of change. Written assignments allow all staff members to know their own and others' responsibilities and serve as a checklist for the manager, enabling her to gauge whether the unit is being run effectively and whether patients are receiving appropriate care. Telling the staff nurses that she is making changes to benefit their performance should occur only after the nurse has made a thorough evaluation. Evaluations are usually done on a yearly basis or as needed. Question 26. Nurse Claris is teaching a patient about a newly prescribed drug. What could cause a geriatric patient to have difficulty retaining knowledge about prescribed medications? A. Decreased plasma drug levels. B. Sensory deficits. C. Lack of family support. D. History of Tourette syndrome. Question 26. Answer. B. Sensory deficits. Question 26. Explanation. Sensory deficits could cause a geriatric patient to have difficulty retaining knowledge about prescribed medications. Decreased plasma drug levels do not alter the patient's knowledge about the drug. A lack of family support may affect compliance, not knowledge retention. Wallet syndrome is unrelated to knowledge retention. Question 27. When examining a patient with abdominal pain the nurse in charge should assess a. any quadrant first. B. The symptomatic quadrant first. C. The symptomatic quadrant last. D. The symptomatic quadrant either a second or third. Question 27 Answer. C. The symptomatic quadrant last. Question 27 Explanation. The nurse should systematically assess all areas of the abdomen, if time and the patient's condition permit, concluding with the symptomatic area. Otherwise, the nurse may elicit pain in the symptomatic area causing the muscles in other areas to tighten. This would interfere with further assessment. Question 28. The nurse is assessing a postoperative adult patient. Which of the following should the nurse document as subjective data? A. Vital signs. B. Laboratory test result. C. Patient's description of pain. D. Electrocardiographic, ECG, waveforms. Question 28. Answer. See patient's description of pain question 28 explanation. Subjective data come directly from the patient and usually are recorded as direct quotations that reflect the patient's opinions or feelings about a situation. Vital signs, laboratory test result, and ECG waveforms are examples of objective data. Question 29. A male patient has a soft wrist safety device. Which assessment finding should the nurse consider abnormal? A. A palpable radial pulse. B. A palpable ulnar pulse. C. Cool, pale fingers. D. Pink nail beds. Question 29 Answer. C. Cool, pale fingers. Question 29 Explanation. A safety device on the wrist may impair circulation and restrict blood supply to body tissues. Therefore, the nurse should assess the patient for signs of impaired circulation, such as cool, Pale fingers. A palpable radial or lunar pulse and pink nail beds are normal findings. Question 30. Which of the following planes divides the body longitudinally into anterior and posterior regions? A. Frontal plane. B. Sagittal plane. C. Mid sagittal plane. D. Transverse plane. Question 30. Answer. A frontal plane. Question 30. Explanation. Frontal or coronal plane runs longitudinally at a right angle to a sagittal plane dividing the body in anterior and posterior regions. A sagittal plane runs longitudinally dividing the body into right and left regions, 
if exactly midline, it is called a mid-sagittal plane. A transverse plane runs horizontally at a right angle to the vertical axis, dividing the structure into superior and inferior regions. Question 31, a female patient with a terminal illness is in denial. Indicators of denial include, a. Shock dismay. b. Numbness. c. Stoicism. d. Preparatory grief. Question 31 Answer, a shock dismay Question 31 Explanation, shock and dismay are early signs of denial the first stage of grief. The other options are associated with depression, a later stage of grief. Question 32, the nurse in charge is transferring a patient from the bed to a chair. Which action does the nurse take during this patient transfer? A. Position the head of the bed flat. B. Helps the patient dangle the legs. C. Stands behind the patient. D. Places the chair facing away from the bed. Question 32 Answer. B. Helps the patient dangle the legs. Question 32 Explanation. After placing the patient in high Fowler's position and moving the patient to the side of the bed, the nurse helps the patient sit on the edge of the bed and dangle the legs. The nurse then faces the patient and places the chair next to and facing the head of the bed. Question 33. A female patient who speaks a little English has emergency gallbladder surgery, during discharge preparation, which nursing action would best help this patient understand wound care instruction? A. Asking frequently if the patient understands the instruction. B. Asking an interpreter to replay the instructions to the patient. C. Writing out the instructions and having a family member read them to the patient. D. Demonstrating the procedure and having the patient return the demonstration. Question 33 Answer. D. Demonstrating the procedure and having the patient return the demonstration. Question 33 Explanation. Demonstrating by the nurse with a return demonstration by the patient ensures that the patient can perform wound care correctly. Patients may claim to understand discharge instruction when they do not. An interpreter of family member may communicate verbal or written instructions inaccurately. Question 34. Before administering the evening dose of a prescribed medication, the nurse on the evening shift finds an unlabeled, filled syringe in the patient's medication drawer. What should the nurse in charge do? A. Discard the syringe to avoid a medication error. B. Obtain a label for the syringe from the pharmacy. C. Use the syringe because it looks like it contains the same medication the nurse was prepared to give. D. Call the day nurse to verify the contents of the syringe. Question 34 Answer. A. Discard the syringe to avoid a medication error. Question 34 Explanation. As a safety precaution, the nurse should discard an unlabeled syringe that contains medication. The other options are considered unsafe because they promote error. Question 35. When administering drug therapy to a male geriatric patient, the nurse must stay especially alert for adverse effects. Which factor makes geriatric patients to adverse drug effects? A faster drug clearance. B. Aging-related physiological changes. C. Increased amount of neurons. D. Enhanced blood flow to the GI tract. Question 35 Answer. B. Aging-related physiological changes Question 35 Explanation. Aging-related physiological changes account for the increased frequency of adverse drug reactions in geriatric patients. Renal and hepatic changes cause drugs to clear more slowly in these patients. With increasing age, neurons are lost and blood flow to the GI tract decreases. Question 36. A female patient is being discharged after cataract surgery. After providing medication teaching, the nurse asks the patient to repeat the instructions. The nurse is performing which professional role? A manager. B. Educator. C. Caregiver. D. Patient Advocate. Question 36 Answer. B. Educator. Question 36 Explanation. When teaching a patient about medications before discharge, the nurse is acting as an educator. The nurse acts as a manager when performing such activities as scheduling and making patient care assignments. The nurse performs the caregiving role when providing direct care, including bathing patients and administering medications and prescribed treatments. The nurse acts as a patient advocate when making the patient's wishes known to the doctor.
Question 37, a female patient exhibits signs of heightened anxiety. Which response by the nurse is most likely to reduce the patient's anxiety? A. Everything will be fine. Don't worry. B. Read this manual and then ask me any questions you may have. C. Why don't you listen to the radio? D. Let's talk about what's bothering you. Question 37 Answer. D. Let's talk about what's bothering you. Question 37 Explanation. Anxiety may result from feeling of helplessness, isolation, or insecurity. This response helps reduce anxiety by encouraging the patient to express feelings. The nurse should be supportive and develop goals together with the patient to give the patient some control over an anxiety-inducing situation. Because the other options ignore the patient's feeling and block communication, they would not reduce anxiety. Question 38. A scrub nurse in the operating room has which responsibility? A. Positioning the patient. B. Assisting with gowning and gloving. C. Handling surgical instruments to the surgeon. D. Applying surgical drapes. Question 38. Answer. C. Handling surgical instruments to the surgeon. Question 38. Explanation. The scrub nurse assists the surgeon by providing appropriate surgical instruments and supplies, maintaining strict surgical asepsis and, with the circulating nurse, accounting for all gauze, sponges, needles, and instruments. The circulating nurse assists the surgeon and scrub nurse, positions the patient, applies appropriate equipment and surgical drapes, assists with gowning and gloving and provides the surgeon and scrub nurse with supplies. Question 39. A patient is in the bathroom when the nurse enters to give a prescribed medication. What should the nurse in charge do? A. Leave the medication at the patient's bedside. B. Tell the patient to be sure to take the medication. And then leave it at the bedside. C. Return shortly to the patient's room and remain there until the patient takes the medication. D. Wait for the patient to return to bed, and then leave the medication at the bedside. Question 39 Answer. C. Return shortly to the patient's room and remain there until the patient takes the medication. Question 39 Explanation. The nurse should return shortly to the patient's room and remain there until the patient takes the medication to verify that it was taken as directed. The nurse should never leave medication at the patient's bedside unless specifically requested to do so. Question 40. The physician orders heparin, 7,500 units, to be administered subcutaneously every 6 hours. The vial reads 10,000 units per milliliter. The nurse should anticipate giving how much heparin for each dose? A. 1 fourth milliliter. B. 1 half milliliter. C. 3 fourths milliliter. D. 1 and 1 fourth milliliter. Question 40 Answer. C. 3 fourths milliliter. Question 40 Explanation. The nurse solves the problem as follows. 10,000 units slash 7 comma 500 units equals 1 milliliter slash x 10,000 x equals 7,500 x equals 7, 500 ten thousandths or 3 fourths milliliter. Question 41. The nurse in charge measures a patient's temperature at 102 degrees F. Fahrenheit. What is the equivalent centigrade temperature? A. 39 degrees C. B. 47 degrees C. C. 38.9 degrees C. D. 40.1 degrees C. Celsius. Question 41 Answer. C. 38.9 degrees Celsius. Question 41 Explanation. To convert Fahrenheit degrees to centigrade, use this formula. C degrees equals, F degrees, 32, X 59 C degrees equals, 102 to 32, 59 plus 70 by 59 38.9 degrees Celsius. Question 42, to evaluate a patient for hypoxia, the physician is most likely to order which laboratory test? A. Red blood cell count. B. Sputum culture. C. Total hemoglobin. D. Arterial blood gas, a BG, analysis. Question 42 Answer. D. Arterial blood gas, a BG, analysis. Question 42 Explanation. 
all of these tests help evaluate a patient with respiratory problems. However, ABG analysis is the only test to evaluate gas exchange in the lungs, providing information about patient's oxygenation status. Question 43. The nurse uses a stethoscope to auscultate a male patient's chest. Which statement about a stethoscope with a bell and diaphragm is true? A the bell detects high-pitched sounds best. B the diaphragm detects high-pitched sounds best. C the bell detects thrills best. D the diaphragm detects low-pitched sounds best. Question 43 answer. B the diaphragm detects high-pitched sounds best. Question 43 explanation. The diaphragm of a stethoscope detects high-pitched sound best. The bell detects low-pitched sounds best. Palpation detects thrills best. Question 44. A male patient is to be discharged with a prescription for an analgesic that is a controlled substance. During discharge teaching, the nurse should explain that the patient must fill this prescription how soon after the date on which it was written? A. Within one month. B. Within three months. C. Within six months. D. Within twelve months. Question 44 Answer, C. Within 6 months Question 44 Explanation, In most cases, an outpatient must fill a prescription for a controlled substance within 6 months of the date on which the prescription was written. Question 45, Which human element considered by the nurse in charge during assessment can affect drug administration? A. The patient's ability to recover. B. The patient's occupational hazards. C. The patient's socioeconomic status. D. The patient's cognitive abilities. Question 45 Answer. D. The patient's cognitive abilities. Question 45 Explanation. The nurse must consider the patient's cognitive abilities to understand drug instructions. If not, the nurse must find a family member or significant other to take on the responsibility of administering medications in the home setting. The patient's ability to recover occupational hazards, and socioeconomic status do not affect drug administration. Question 46. An employer establishes a physical exercise area in the workplace and encourages all employees to use it. This is an example of which level of health promotion? A. Primary prevention. B. Secondary prevention. C. Tertiary prevention. D. Passive prevention. Question 46. Answer. A primary prevention question 46 explanation, primary prevention precedes disease and applies to health patients. Secondary prevention focuses on patients who have health problems and are at risk for developing complications. Tertiary prevention enables patients to gain health from others' activities without doing anything themselves. Question 47, what does the nurse in charge do when making a surgical bed? A. Leaves the bed in the high position when finished. B. Places the pillow at the head of the bed. C. Rolls the patient to the far side of the bed. D. Tucks the top sheet and blanket under the bottom of the bed. Question 47 Answer. A. Leaves the bed in the high position when finished. Question 47 Explanation. When making a surgical bed, the nurse leaves the bed in the high position when finished. After placing the top linens on the bed without pouching them. The nurse fan folds these linens to the side opposite from where the patient will enter and places the pillow on the bedside chair. All these actions promote transfer of the post-operative patient from the stretcher to the bed. When making an occupied bed or unoccupied bed, the nurse places the pillow at the head of the bed and tucks the top sheet and blanket under the bottom of the bed. When making an occupied bed, the nurse rolls the patient to the far side of the bed. Question 48. The physician prescribes 250 mg of a drug. The drug vial reads 500 mg slash ml. How much of the drug should the nurse give? A. 2 ml. B. 1 ml. C. 1 half ml. D. 1 fourth ml. Question 48 Answer. C. 1 half ml. Question 48 Explanation. The nurse should give one half milliliter of the drug. The dosage is calculated as follows. 250 milligrams slash x equals 500 milligrams slash 1 milliliter 500 x equals 250 x equals 1 half milliliter. Question 49. 
Nurse Mackey is monitoring a patient for adverse reactions during barbiturate therapy. What is the major disadvantage of barbiturate use? A prolonged half-life. B. Poor absorption. C. Potential for drug dependence. D. Potential for hepatotoxicity. Question 49 Answer. C. Potential for drug dependence. Question 49 Explanation. Patients can become dependent on barbiturates, especially with prolonged use. Because of the rapid distribution of some barbiturates, no correlation exists between duration of action and half-life. Barbiturates are absorbed well and do not cause hepatotoxicity, although existing hepatic damage does require cautions use of the drug because barbiturates are metabolized in the liver. Question 50. Which nursing action is essential when providing continuous enteral feeding? A. Elevating the head of the bed. B. Positioning the patient on the left side. C. Warming the formula before administering it. D. Hanging a full day's worth of formula at one time. Question 50 Answer. A. Elevating the head of the bed. Question 50 Explanation. Elevating the head of the bed during enteral feeding minimizes the risk of aspiration and allows the formula to flow in the patient's intestines. When such elevation is contraindicated, the patient should be positioned on the right side. The nurse should give enteral feeding at room temperature to minimize GI distress. To limit microbial growth, the nurse should hang only the amount of formula that can be infused in. Clean.